tipped off this WNBL season. And it was the Adelaide Lightning who upset the two-time defending champion UC Capitals. But now the Capitals are after revenge, while the Adelaide Lightning are looking to stay in the hunt for the top four race. Welcome to Townsville, and welcome to Friday Night WNBL Action. <laughs> Game 36 of the WNBL season and both teams coming off a loss. Both teams in playoff contention on the run home. It's going to be a cracking night just to see where the Adelaide Lightning sit. They're 4-3 and three on the season, have lost their last two games, but they were against the fully loaded Southside Flyers. Doesn't get much easier tonight. They play the two-time defending champs in the Canberra Capitals. Corbin Middlemass alongside Pete Hawley. Uh, Pete, what are we in for tonight? The Caps and the Lightning. Well, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Both teams coming off a loss. A little bit of a switch up of a starting lineup here from the Caps. Kelsey Griffin back in the starting lineup uh, to pay her out there. So, who's going to respond the best from a loss? I think the Caps was kind of a shock loss. They were kind of rolling. But we want to see the Lightning get back to that pre quarantine form. They were fun to watch. And as you said, they come up against the red hot Southside Flyers, which is a bit tough, not only once, but twice. And I'm expecting them to come out and be really aggressive. So that's the starting lineup for the Canberra Capitals to pay out Rochi, Tolo, Froling, and Griffin. So Kelsey Griffin's the, the new name. We haven't seen her start a heap, obviously, a delayed start to the year through back problems. Uh, that's the Adelaide Lightning starting five. What do you make of that, Pete? Well, it's going to be led by Alex Wilson and Steph Talbot. They've both had tremendous years, and we know how good they are. And Steph Talbot was a bit quiet against the Flyers, but they really put a lot of emphasis on trying to shut her down. So I'm expecting her to have a big one. But when those two are flying, the confidence runs through this young team, and they shoot the ball with confidence and they kind of get this momentum going. So look for the two, uh, two-headed dragon to lead it and then the rest to follow. Adelaide have a few more games up their sleeves than, uh, or up their sleeve than a lot of other teams in the competition given the fact that they had that quarantine period. I feel like there's more in it tonight for Adelaide just to see are they, are they genuinely a playoff contending team or are they a rung below that? So I feel like we're going to find out a lot about them tonight. We know the Caps are, uh, are a legitimate um, title contender. Well, the Caps shown all year how good they can be, and they've knocked off the Flyers, the Boomers before. They know how we, what we're going to see. Can they bounce back like championship teams do? But I'm excited to see this Lightning team now come up against the Caps and really try and showcase what we saw before quarantine. And this season is so shortened, it's so quick, that momentum in games is huge. So can they get back to that? And if they do, it's going to be a fun game. Mm. You saw Braden Hazelhurst off the top. He's been busy. He's already caught up with Talia Tapea and also Carly Smith a short time ago from both the Caps and the Lightning. Um, Talia, what did you guys learn from the uh, loss the other night against Melbourne? Yeah, our offence was pretty stagnant. We weren't moving the D a lot, so it'll be a focus on that tonight. And then just our defensive pressure, getting up and in on the ball. Against Adelaide tonight, what's the focus going in against them? Yeah, uh, push the ball in transition. If not, get into our structure and defensive pressure, the same thing. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, sweet. Uh, Carly, what did you guys learn from the two losses against Southside on the weekend? Yeah, look, uh, we definitely learnt a lot. Uh, we need to improve on our defence as a team, but um, that's all in the past now. So at the moment, we're just focusing on tonight's game, but I uh, definitely did learn a lot. Uh, going against Capitals, two-time defending champions, what's the focus uh, going in against them? Yeah, so obviously they're a very talented team. Um, so mainly defence, like I said, um, as a group, we just need to work on our defensive principles and hopefully that will get us uh, the job done. Thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs> So Carly Smith chatting there a short time ago with Braden Hazelhurst. There's the Adelaide Lightning, the last word from coach Chris Lucas. Of course, just two years ago, these two teams played in the championship deciding series. Of course, the Capitals winning the first of their back-to-back -back crowns. Now, the Caps are also donating to Lifeline for all team assists from the uh, match pass against the Melbourne Boomers. So that was 17 assists in total and for the upcoming match tonight against the Adelaide Lightning. So what that means, Pete, is that each team member is going to donate $1 per assist. It is Lifeline Round, Round 4 of the WNBL season. Uh, and you can visit that website there on screen, lifeline.org.au. Oh, it's just a great thing. And Jenna Hayes led this and kind of driven it. But just to see every player and everyone in the league really just take it with open arms and help it grow is just an awesome thing. And everyone should be very proud of, of how much they've got around it. And you see the donations flowing in and the conversations and people talk to each other about it all, which is 
how good it is because it's obviously a very touching and sad story, but the good that's starting to come out of it is really awesome and heartwarming to see. I think if you're trying to pick a category to try and focus on and to donate on the back of that, obviously points is the other one, but assists feels like a nice category for a team to try and be involved in um, if, you, if you're going to pick one particular area. Well, it has, and the assists have been flying. Everyone's been throwing the ball around, which is good, and it's going to be interesting tonight with both teams really saying that defense is going to be a huge emphasis. They've gone with different starting lineups here, and I think it's probably trying to really go at both sets of guards. We know how good both these sets of guards are, and it's going to be a cracker. Both teams looking to bounce back. It's the Capitals and the Lightning as round four. Lifeline round rolls on. And Steph Talbot has the ball in hand already. One of the MVP contenders. There's the pa bounce pass from Weerun and chucks it away. So an early intercept for Talia Tapaya. The Capitals get it back. Adelaide unable to get the shot up despite the first touch of the basketball. Tapaya draws the foul, caught on Wilson. Fascinating watching Steph Talbot. Feels like she's in career best form, Pete. The numbers against the Flyers, though, a little down. And remember, she didn't play as many minutes as we're used to seeing, but just 6 and 11 in the two games against the Flyers. Trying to make her way to the rack. Rochi draws the foul, so she'll head to the foul line, try and get the scoring going for Canberra. Oh, Rochi's been terrific just from the jump this season. We've seen that she, she's been great these last couple of years, averaging 15, 3, and 4 so far this season. Just super aggressive, super quick. And not afraid of anything. And on top, but definitely an MVP candidate. I think there's, a, there's probably three in my mind that are up there right now. And had a bit of a quiet one, but it's a lot of credit to her because the Flyers kind of went at her. And I'm expecting her to come out and really have a big game tonight. Rochi, two of two at the foul line. So Liz Cambage and Lauren Nicholson. Yeah. I think that's, that's fair. I'm sure a lot of people will be in that camp. Here's Wilson away to We Run. Finds Brooke up top, drives, scoop layup, misses. Rochi pulls it down, Talbot awake to it, tried to pick her pocket unsuccessfully, and the Capitals gather the basketball in the midcourt. He's to pay her another amongst the starters after coming off the bench, and an injury interrupted start combines with Griffin. Back-to-back -back baskets for the Capitals. They're away, four points to nothing. That's the offensive execution we've, we've come to know and love from the Caps, and we've seen them really do really put teams away with how well they execute. They're just all on the same page. And as we saw for, uh, heard from Tapaya at the start of in the interview, that it wasn't like that against the Boomers. They thought they broke down offensively. So if they can clean that up, that's where they're most dangerous. Great cross screen. And Kelsey Griffin, good to see her. Hopefully we get some more minutes out of her as, as this season goes. Here's Wee Run coming off 21 points against the Flyers on Sunday. Shoots from the elbow. That's nice. Meet jumper from Abby Wee Run. So he gets the scoring going for Adelaide. The early advance cut out. Caps keep possession. It's a great knockdown by Wee Run in the game against the Flyers. She started 0 5 and then had a shooter's roll on a little pull up, and then after that went whack, whack, whack from three. So that's a good little start. And, and look her to get him up from here. Rolling back home in Townsville, chucks it in. Jay up from Griffin, no good. Rebound to Rochi and retreats out of the key. Eight seconds on the red numbers. Rochi. The dribble penetration draws the foul. Trying to put it up, she'll head to the foul line again. Well, we've seen a lot so far this season. Rochi and Jade Melbourne have been a really good starting backcourt with their energy. So you'd assume Tapay has come in to try and go to Alex Wilson and really try and keep her quiet from the jump because I like what I've seen, especially Rochi and Jade Melbourne playing together. But gives Paul Goris another thing to have a little spark off the bench, bring Jade Melbourne in and kind of give her that energy that we've seen in that starting role. Second meeting between these two teams. They played back on opening night, as Braden told us off the top. So that game went into overtime. Adelaide winning 85 to 73. But the Caps are without three of their roster members, including Tapaya and Griffin, who are starting tonight. Badish kicks it out. Here's Wilson, chucks up the three. Can't connect, and Tolo pulls down the rebound. So Rochi, two trips to the foul line, four of four. Place distributor here to Griffin who pops it in off the window. So troubling start for Adelaide. The Caps rolling, Pete, eight to two. Oh, just a really smart seal. Just beat her down the court and then just stood underneath the basket. Great seal, and that's always going to be an easy finish. You've got to do your work early against these smart players. We know how good Kelsey Griffin is. We know she's coming off an injury as Talbot lets one fly. Marina Whittle coming off the bench tonight. Shot doesn't go. Frolling down the other end. 
Up top to Rochi, out to Griffin, the handoff to Tapaya. Out to Tolo, and Tolo banks down the long jump shot. They're feeling it offensively here, the Capitals. They lead it 10 to 2. Mariana Tolo starting the season in her hometown of Mackay. She's had a fantastic season so far. A big game against Liz Cambage and the victory over the Flyers. And we run from long range. Jacks the three, no good. And Froling pulls down the board. In her hometown tonight. Rochi off, off the dribble. That's good. And there's the horn for the timeout. Chris Lucas wants to chat. And the Capitals started like they've been shot out of a cannon here, Pete. They lead it 12 to 2. Well, not only are they shooting well, but they're just a more aggressive team. And, and see Maddie Rochi there, and she's already started. She's got her eye, and she's been to the free throw line, hasn't missed. But that last offensive possession from the Lightning is kind of where their problem is. It's all east to west. There's nothing really going downhill besides the first play of the game. And you want to get through offense, but you want to be able to go north to south. You want to attack the rim, put the pressure on, because if you're the Canberra Capitals right now, you're just going to watch them pass the ball around the three-point line and not be too afraid. So look for some changes here and, and see what they can come out of this time out. Here's Paul Goros, the coach of the Capitals. We run down against the zone, we're looking high-low. So let the flare screen go, punch it in there, get a low post seal. So we're ready for the zone right now. Keep attacking. Okay. Good job keeping the ball in front. Hey, the rim run is good for us right now. So early post seal. Well, we haven't got it on early. Go straight to the wing and then post up. Okay, yes, 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 Game so predicated on defense that the Canberra Capitals, they gave up 73 points against Melbourne the other night. It's the most they've given up in uh, any game this season in, in regulation. Um, obviously more than that in the, the opening game against Adelaide, but um, boy, it's happening for them offensively early here. Well, we've seen when, when their offense is executing well and their energy's up, their defense just kind of rolls with it, and that's where they've really started to, to get those good wins on teams. And they did it against the Flyers a, a week ago as well. So when this Caps team is executing on both ends with energy, they're really, really tough. Brayden, what did Chris Lucas have to say to the Lightning? Yeah, he was really focusing on the offensive end, thought their poor execution was leading to easy opportunities for the UC Cats, and then was talking about not letting Kelsey Griffin just get down the court and get those early seals too easy as well to start this game. And then, but looking at the UC Cats, I spoke to Paul Goris before the game, and he said they seem a lot more energetic, a lot more relaxed after that loss the other night. So uh, a good start for the UC Cats as well. Right, and Hazelhurst, the courtside for us. The other one's Luella Tomlinson as well, who's coming off the bench tonight. Shot goes up from Griffin, grabs her own rebound, pops it back in for two more. A rebounding count here, Pete, seven to zip. The Capitals 14 to two. Talbot tries to answer back at the other end unsuccessfully. Whittle competes outnumbered, and the Caps back away in transition. Here's Rochi, well, caught between two minds. I'm not sure whether that was a shot or a pass, trying to feed Froling in the low block and chucks it away. Um, they can afford that though, Canberra. They're off to a flyer here. They lead it by 12. Well, it was a really good seal there. Just the pass was a bit long to Keely Froling. But yeah, the Lightning, you want to get through offense and really start to find out where you can be successful against this Caps defense because you can take contested threes. As we see there, a nice little curl screen and much better right on cue. And great read by Steph Talbot. Great pass and a better finish. And if they can start to execute that way, it makes the Caps have to adjust. Right now, the Caps are getting whatever they want on both ends. Talbot's first bucket. Stops a 10-point run for the Capitals as well as Rochi hands it off. Tolo steps out of the key just in time. Rochi tries her hand from three, left it short. And then Wilson bowls her over, competing for the rebound. That'll be the second foul on Alex Wilson through the opening four and a half minutes. Someone who plays a lot of time for Adelaide, she's averaging upwards of 35 minutes a game so far this year, and she's going to have to sit here with her second personal. Yeah, that's going to hurt a lot because her aggressiveness is something that the Lightning kind of uh, flow with, and that she had the first foul, and that one's a bit undisciplined, and Maddie Rochi should not be getting close to that offensive rebound from three unless it goes over your head, so you've got to still box out because Maddie Rochi's a very good rebounding guard as well, uh, but that's going to hurt. Who's going to be able to step up now on this Lightning team in that guard space? He's to pay out, chucks it down to the corner. Cabello, one of the best three-point shooters in the game, catches the eye and it bounces long. Weirung chucks it away. Out towards Ortlop, who's on the floor for her first minutes. This is Weirung trying to make her way to the rack. Oh, just chucks it up over her head. A little unorthodox, doesn't drop. Tolo again cleaning the board. So, rebounding count 10 to 1. 
Canberra's way and a 10 point differential on the scoreboard. Michaela Roof up top. Down low, Tolo goes to work, more points off the glass. And you can see just the two contrasting styles of offense there. Canberra just getting through everything, setting screens, just getting players where they're going to be successful. And Tolo there and just has a nice, easy finish. And the two times that we've seen the Lightning run through offense, they've got some scores. And it's going to be hard to break this Caps team down one-on-one. -on -one. They're just, they move too well together. The help side defense is there. It's going to be really hard as we see there. And, Good screen from Whittle, and I'm looking for Whittle to bounce back. She had a really good game against the Flyers, just not on the scoreboard. Missed a lot of easy layups, and I'm sure she'll want back. 15 and 8, her numbers from that game on Sunday. They played the Flyers twice in four days, but as you said, didn't quite happen for her. Uh, the Wednesday fixture, just the eight points, six rebounds. And here comes Jake Melbourne, who was starting at the start of the year. One of the most exciting prospects in the game. It's really been... Great talking point, hasn't it? The, the water cooler conversation with uh, with Jade Melbourne and Shyla Hill, two of the, the fastest rising stars, two teenagers who have both had excellent starts to the new season. It's a big problem for every other team in the league. She's now coming off the bench to add depth to the two-time defending champs. Melbourne chucks it away to Roof. Two seconds on the shot clock, puts it up, no good. Talbot pulls it down, trying to get Adelaide going in transition. That's a much better defensive set, and that's the offense you want to see Steph Talbot taking it. And that's when you can afford to kind of break off one on one in transition, but it starts with your defensive effort. Secure the rebound of Steph Talbot. That's what, that's what we know and love to see from her. It's when they're at their best. We've seen that from Adelaide already this year. It's their second rebound of the game, and Talbot turns it into points at the other end. Melbourne through the lane, draws the foul, trying to get the shot up. Might be a little unlucky there, Whittle. That looked like she might have got beat, just switched on that, but a lot of ball, and yeah, very unlucky. But Jade Melbourne, it's going to be an interesting one for her, because as you said, she's played very well in that starting role, and it kind of does kind of change things around now of where does she see her role in the team? Because she's going to come on, we know that she's been a great scorer, we know she can create for the. Uh, for her team as well, and hopefully she can just keep that same exact uh, role that she had as a starter, but just coming off the bench now. Adelaide will know all about Jade Melbourne. Actually played a pre-season game against the Adelaide Lightning before the WNBL started. She's playing for the Centre of Excellence and lit it up there before she'd even signed for the Capitals. What was uh, ultimately a losing cause. Of course, they played again against one another back in round one as Whittle called for the walk off the dribble. Canberra get it back. Unforced error as such going against Adelaide in this opening quarter. Three and a half minutes to run. Cap still by 12. Frolling still out there as is Tolo, a couple of the starters. There's another whistle coming here. It's going against uh, Luella Tomlinson for a push coming off the bench here. And that's Tolo just seeing that she had the defender uh, in the wrong spot and just sealing really early in, in a little push, but. Very smart player, Tolo. She knows exactly how to play on both ends really effectively and uses her size well and just seals at the right time. It's all well and good to just be to be big and strong, but if you can't seal at the right time, you're going to get defenders to get around you, and then she goes and earns them right there. Had 11-6 and six on last outing for the Capitals and a losing game against Melbourne back on Tuesday. Mariana Tolo makes both foul shots and sits down. So there's a fair bit in those last two graphics you've seen. One, uh, the fouling by Adelaide, so... Canberra's in the bonus, and they're perfect at the foul line. Adelaide haven't had a trip there yet. 14-point game. Tomlinson trying to kick it back out. Ortlund, the dribble penetration out to Whittle. Catch and shoot. Doesn't catch any of the rim and disappears over the baseline. Capitals get another stop defensively. You can see the lighting a bit out of sync on offense. They throw the ball in there to Tomlinson and kind of run into each other, cutting off her. And as we said, the Canberra Capitals defense is going to be too good. You've got to be running through your, your plays. You've got to be executing, setting screens, and really making good reads because you just make it too easy for the Caps when you're running into each other. Brittany Smart out there now. League vet missed the last time these two teams played with a calf complaint. Capitals off to a bright start here. Cabillo finds a passage through to the basket, misses an open layup. Roof recovers it, chucks it back to Melbourne, puts it on the floor. Drew the defender, 
and fouled inside the charge circle. She'll go to the line for more shots. And these are the tough minutes for the LA Lightning. It hasn't worked out so far in this quarter, but there's so much time to go, and you can't compound errors with... Granted, that probably should have gone down as a wide open one for Cabillo, but you've got to make sure you get on that rebound. And if you're not scoring on one end, you can make sure you get a stop each time, try and stem that bleeding until your offense starts to click. 75% foul shooters so far this year. Jade Melbourne, the 18-year-old, knocks down both of those. Been emphasizing, Pete, those numbers in that opening quarter, plus 13 of the rebounds. Well, 3 of 12 from the field for the Lightning is just not going to get it done in turnovers like that. And especially if good teams are going to make you pay for every single one of those errors on both ends. And right now, the Capitals are. Oh, Jade Melbourne makes her way through the paint, puts the shot up, doesn't go. Here's a chance in transition for Adelaide as Talbot chucks it away. We run. Up top to Ortlup. They slow it back down. Whittle dumps it down low. Here's Tomlinson. Now in a double, uh, to his Talbot rather, double team. Puts the shot up. Foul trying to wrestle out of there. It's better recognition. You saw she had the mismatch to get it down low, but you see the Caps, they're swarming on her straight away. They're trying to get that double and got a little bit handsy in there and, and kind of gave away what was a really good defensive possession because as soon as she caught the ball, there was a double ready to come. And whether that's a play call that they've called, they're going to double her in the post, or it's just a really, really smart read defensively by the Caps. How many times have we seen Steph Talbot this year in the open floor running downhill where she's most threatening? So difficult to guard in those scenarios when you, you're only pulling down, what, three rebounds in a quarter of basketball. It doesn't give her too many opportunities to, to beat her best in those scenarios. You're exactly right. We saw the one time she did get a rebound, she took it off uh, coast to coast, and that's is where she's at her best. And it's where the Lightning are at their best, but it's not going to help if you can't get a stop because the Caps are filling it up right now. Brittany Smart banging them down. That doesn't help coming off the bench. So all of a sudden, it's a 19-point game. There's still 90 seconds to go before quarter time. Tell it missing her foul shots, which led to that three. Tomlinson fumbles over the baseline. And you can see a little frustration in the lightning right now, and it does compound when the Caps seem to be just getting whatever they want down one end. You're thinking about how we're going to try and get stops, but on one, the other side, as we heard uh, Chris Lucas was saying, as Braden said, the, the offense is, is called stagnant and people aren't moving together, and it's going to be a long night unless they can make a change quick. Minute 10 to go, Michaela Roof up top with a handoff away towards Melbourne, trying to go off the dribble. Hand in there from Ortlip. Cabillo back with it the midcourt. Five on the red numbers. Cabillo goes off the dribble, lays it up, can't finish. Bounces off the window, missed the rim. Griffin thought it caught some of it. She can't believe the call as the backboard lights up. Talk us through the replay, Pete. Well, tough to see from that angle, but... Better defensive possession. I don't know, Camilla got downhill, but you can see there were some bodies around her. It looked like the right call. It didn't look to be hitting the rim right there. But can they capitalize now? Just get something on the scoreboard and look at that. They're just swarming all over Steph Talbot whenever she tries to get close. Here is Talbot. Puts the shot up. Three seconds in the key. So Talbot, they finally got her the ball and she's penalized for that. So another. Uh, another possession goes back and they hand it straight back to the Capitals. So you saw her there pointing to Orlup saying call for the ball and pass it from the wing. She, that was where her seal was. That was where the angle the ball had to come from, not the high post. And You can't let the frustration really creep in because it looks like they are trying to force things a little too much. His roof out to Smart. Three ball up, rattles out. Griffin leaps up, grabs another offensive rebound. Doing a job on the Lightning in every category at the moment, the Capitals. And now a foul on the offense as Griffin is going to be called for the illegal pick on all of them. A little bit goes Adelaide's way there as they get the possession back and deny the Caps a final score in this quarter. Well, all credit there to all of just getting up and in, giving defensive energy. That's what we've wanted to see so far in this quarter. And getting her hands in there, a few little deflections. That's what caused that uh, offensive foul there by Griffin because she was so up and in on defense. Eight seconds left, We Run trying to make her way to the basket, shot up and in. With some points right as the buzzer goes for quarter time, so they avoid the lowest opening score in any quarter so far this year in the WNBL. They get themselves to eight, but they're well behind in the game. The Capitals running rough shot over the Lightning in that opening term, 25 to eight. 
Well, Chris Lucas is going to look at that last play right there and say, when we run for their offense, we can get good shots. And just a great read off the screen. And Thomas had a great little pass, good finish. It was a tough finish, but that's the offensive execution that Chris Lucas is going to want to see. And to try and make the Capitals have to do something different on defense, it's all just too easy right now. Just Chris Lucas catch the lining. Now, Eddie Catch in the post here. Griffin is coming. So we need to change sides to the open player. We don't have to force him to step. Any post catch doesn't mean it's not just step. Griffin is leaving her player. The wind side is playing too. Okay? So we've got value possession. We need to get that done the other end to get our game going. They just want it hard enough. We need to get after it. Okay. And we say we need to move the ball. Offensively, if it's not on, move the basketball. You don't need to call one. Has everyone got it? Get your matchups done. Let's go. Okay, where we go. Let's go. What you pick up from all that, Pete? Well, he said don't try and force it, and we saw it in a couple of possessions before where they really just try to throw it down to Steph Talbot. Yeah, she's one of your best players, but you can't force these kind of things, especially with the uh, defense the Capitals are giving. Move that ball, find those gaps, and when they've done that the few times, they've had success, but he said down the other end, they want it more. The Caps are going after offensive rebounds, 17-4 to four rebounds. They're getting to the line. They're just more aggressive. And he said, we really have to hit bodies. Who wants this more? And it's going to start at that end and carry over on the offense. So can they come out in this second quarter and just show something in these first two minutes? 0-5 from the three-point line, Adelaide. And five turnovers to two, but the rebounding counts, there's the big one, which you can emphasize there, Pete. 17 to four. And the offensive board, seven to nothing. It's going to be an early foul here in the second term. Going against Taylor Orlop. Five to start on the floor here for Canberra in the second term. Tapeo, Rochi, Tolo, Froling and Griffin. So back to the starters for Canberra. Up 17. Here's Tapeo off the dribble. Trying to work her way around Weerung. Bounce pass to Griffin. Griffin, spin move on Talbot, shot goes up, doesn't go. Oboard again, Tolo tries to put it up. Tomlinson with the block shot. Now a chance for Talbot, chucks it down low. Brock shot up and in. So back-to-back -back baskets for Adelaide either side of quarter time. That's oh, much better defensive effort. Chris Lucas said to Steph Talbot, find Kelsey Griffin. She's already got six and five. And great little spin by Kelsey Griffin. And then tough shot, but you've got to come up with that rebound the first time. They got lucky that... Thomas have got a piece of Tolo shot and then just a great smart play and a tough finish and can they keep this rolling now? Rochi has got the line a few times already, works her way to the rack here and scoop layups good for two. Speaking of players playing with confidence, how, how confident is she playing right now? She's ultra aggressive on both ends but when the ball's in her hand something good seems to happen all the time and that's just a great luxury to have for you, Paul Goris, knowing you've got those kind of caliber guards that are going to bring energy no matter what. And when she sits down, you've got Jade Melbourne coming in. Brittany Smart's already knocked down a three, and that's what makes them such a good team. Her Opal's chances, I know she's in the extended squad. It feels like she has to be a better show now than she was leading into the... <laughs> yeah, season. that's going to be a tough one for sure. There's a couple of those, those point guards, as you said, and as we see, Brooke letting one fly there. And, Another O board, you've got Shyla Hill. You're going to take those developments. Lilani Mitchell started to show what we know and love to see from her. So, Katie Ebsery as well. It's going to be a real tough, and I'm so glad I'm not having to pick that. So, second look at the offense for the first time for Adelaide, and they get some points. Ortlund bangs down to three after their first offensive rebound. So, something happening here for Adelaide. Still at 14 points, but a better little patch in the game here, having a few moments either side of quarter time. Frolling out the Tolo, extra pass to Tapaya. Tapaya off the dribble, the runner's up and in. That'll do. Gets the shooter's roll off the rim. Back to 16 points. All look down in the corner. Dribbles up top, away to Brook. To Wilson with a couple of early fouls. Up to Tomlinson, five left on the shot clock. Tomlinson driving Tolo, blocks the shot. Had a foot on the baseline after doing so, but...
There's two players that have played a lot in this league against one another and a win for Tolo there with the block shot. She looked like she was beat and then just comes across and unlucky just stepped out and after touching that, but really, that helps our defense not giving up on the play when you've been beat it, it is why their defense is, is so good. But ortler has been the one to really spark this Adelaide run as, as Tauber lets one fly. She had the O board, which led to her wide open three, but it all started with her defense in the end of that first quarter with picking up that little offensive foul on Kelsey Griffin. Here's Tapaya out to Rochi. Clean look and splash. The three ball good for Matty Rochi. And the margin is back to 19 on the back of that. So despite Adelaide's work and improvements here offensively in the early stages of the second quarter, it's an equal game-high margin Canberra's way. And that was the first possession this quarter where their defense was miscommunication. And you give Matty Rochi, who's on fire right now, any sort of space. She's going to make you pay, whether it's at the rim or, or shooting from the three. So, Lightning have started well. They've got to get back to it. Every possession, when you're down this much, is magnified. You've got to keep the, string those stops together. And here go the caps on the other end. Wilson's shot doesn't go. Nice bounce pass to pay it. of Froling and Froling with the layup. It's beyond 20 points now. Just under seven minutes to go in the second term. Talbot to answer back at the other end. Oh, another blocked shot attempt from Polo. She's going to be called for the foul, reaching in on Steph Talbot. Missed her foul shots earlier, she'll get another crack at the line here. That breakaway possession from the Caps, and that's a terrific bounce pass, great finish. And They're a team that when they're up and running and they're getting stops, they just take off, any player can just go, and it's so exciting to watch them in the open floor, and they play for each other, the ball's flying around, and right now they, they're just firing on all cylinders, and that's why they built this lead. Timeout called by coach Chris Lucas. 21 point margin. Here is Lucas. And Chris Lucas there talking what we've been uh, looking at is their defense and you've got to have that pride of, of staying in front, moving your feet and staying down and yet the Caps have only hit two threes, they're two of five from three point land but right now they're just driving past at will and getting to the rim, getting fouls, getting to the line, getting O boards so when your player's got the ball, you've got to get down in the stance. You've got to move your feet, use your body to try and keep them in front of you because right now they're getting whatever they want as soon as they get past that first line of help. And if someone does come across, if Tomlinson comes across to try and help on that help side, they just pass it down and it's an easy finish. Braden, what did Paul Goris have to say, the coach of the Capitals? Not much, to be honest. He was pretty happy with the way they've been playing so far, just seeing on some offensive execution. But for me, there's two big differences for Canberra tonight compared to the loss against Melbourne. They, they, I thought they were out-muscled a bit by Melbourne Boomers the other night, and they've really come out and sent a message early on both ends, being aggressive, but also, like Peter said earlier, making contact on screens, being physical down the defensive end, all that sort of stuff, which has really led to this big lead. And then, second of all, when they've struggled against teams, they've really taken advantage of their small guards by posting them up and stuff like that. And I think the change in the starting lineup has really addressed that issue because Adelaide haven't been able to take advantage of that early, and that's one area that Gorry uh, was concerned about before the game. Great inside from Brayden Hazelhurst, court side as to pay up. It's a shot up. Again, they recover the ball offensively. Froling to Rochi. She doesn't need too many opportunities as she bangs down yet another three. 14 points for Rochi. Just getting multiple looks every time down the floor. Well, they are, and that's exactly what we touched on. Chris Lucas said it. They just wanted more down that end, and they're getting those extra efforts. And you can't let good teams get so many extra shots. They're going to make you pay, and we've seen it. So far this game, as Weirung lets one fly, and oh, she recovers the ball too. So another opportunity for Adelaide here. Brooke away to Talbot. Talbot with the little Euro step, able to find her way to the rack and lays it home. Great offensive rebound. The Caps have been doing that all game, so it's good to see that from the Lightning and Talbot. That's where she's going to be good. Is broken play. The defense isn't set. Gives her a chance to go one on one, where we're probably going to back her one on one against any other player. 23-point margin a short time ago, back to 21, Froling. 
Is it knocked out of her grasp? Last touch by Badish. Big game for Adelaide tonight. We touched on it on lead in. The question's been how do they go against the teams in and around their station? We've seen them record some wins against teams like Sydney and Bendigo and then come up a long way short against the Flyers. They were heavily beaten in Townsville last start in this gym up against the Melbourne Boomers. It's not going their way early tonight. It's Rochi Jacks the free. Touch on it from Griffin. Can't control the handle and out it goes. Adelaide ball. Well, there's a lot of talk about them coming out of quarantine. Are their legs going to be there? Their fitness? But it's more that they were actually playing really well in those two games. Everyone was on the same page. They kind of had that that chemistry early, which is really hard to find in a season without a really long preseason. And now they've got to try and get back to that. And you don't have too much time to, on the training court to do it. It's got to be in games. They've played the Flyers the last two games. It's really hard to try and figure stuff out against a team like that. And now you come up against the reigning champs. It's going to be tough. But plenty of time left in this game and to just slowly tick over where they can go and build momentum from now that they can take into the next couple of games. Second chance points, 9-2. Capitals wait. Backs up that Obet, uh, offensive rebound tally of 8 3. Capitals favour. Nice look here for Badish. Knocks that down. Can that get Adelaide going? Hits the three ball from up top. Well, Badish with the start tonight for Adelaide. He's smart. Bounce pass to Griffin, and Griffin draws the foul. Trying to take it all the way to the hoop again. Kelsey Griffin. Just so well, great little pass by Smart there. And their offense, when they run through the, their execution, and if you're a help side defender, I, I can't see a uh, Badish right there. That's going to be you coming across. You really leave Chelsea Brook on an island there because she's got to show and then get back. And that's why she's never going to be in position because she's helping out on that ball screen. So if you're the low help side underneath the rim, you've got to call that early and go across. And that's when you can take the charge. Or if not, you can stand there and not foul with your arms up because. You really make a, the help defender on that screen have to really struggle to get back in front. It's just not going to happen. 12 of 12 from the foul line so far. The three points for Canberra as we run Jacks the three again unsuccessfully. Smart tries to keep it alive, takes out the advertising hoardings. It's going to be Adelaide Ball though in their front court. Desperate play from Smart. Point game. We run down low. Roof intercepts it for Canberra. One of the new faces for the Capitals this year, as is Tapaya, coming across from Sydney. Griffin chucks it away. We run downhill. One on one with Cabillo. Tries to take it up. Cabillo got all ball. Great work defensively, but last touch by the Capitals over the baseline. How's this for a bit of one on one defending, Pete? Oh, that's terrific. Down the other end, probably got away with one there, but. The lining pushing in. Great hands because your hands come down. If you get any other part of the ball there, it's going to be a foul sent into the line. So, re really nice little block there. Four minutes to play before half time. 20 point game. Wilson with limited minutes and early foul trouble. Shot goes up unsuccessfully. Grabbed down by Brook. Tries to put it back up. Draws the foul. And you can see what the capital have done. They've highlighted Alex Wilson and Steph Talbot as their two dangers on the other team and every time they catch the ball everyone's head is on a swivel looking where are they going are they going to try and go one on one because I'm there to help you and you're going to have my back as well and that's what Chris Lucas was saying is don't have to force it you can get the ball moving around and, and then get players in their right spots where they can be successful because the Caps they're too well drilled to know that, that it, they're not going to let Steph Talbot and Alex Wilson beat them they want somebody else to do it so that ball's going to fly around and really take advantage of when defense is moving Brooke with both of her foul shots made at the line, having a breakout season, the 22-year-old. A state league MVP at, uh, just at, as a teenager. Barossa Valley Jr. 18-point game. Cabello, bounce pass trying to find Roof, disappears over the baseline, last touch Adelaide. Brooke was really good in that in the last quarter against Southside Flyers when that game was, was all sewn up and she knocked down a couple threes and really good defensive uh, possessions. And that's what you want to see when in a game like that, who's going to step up and really just keep grinding and take those opportunities? And she was definitely one and look for her to keep building on that confidence. Another O board for Tapaya. Here's Cabillo in the midcourt. Off the dribble, down to Smart in the corner, catch and shoot. 
A little long to pay her again on the offensive rebound. Another look at it offensively. Cabillo chucks it into the shoe of Whittle. Canberra ball. Timeout going to be called here as well by coach Paul Gorris, so who wants to chat it over. Did lead by 23 points earlier in the quarter. It's 18 at the moment, Canberra's way, but oh, early on it was 14 to 2, and they've never looked back at the Canberra Capitals from that point on. Well, it could be a lot worse on the scoreboard for the Lightning because they have given up 10 0 boards, but they've given up so many in succession that you're just giving them any chance to score. And when you're struggling to put the ball in the basket yourselves, it's going to be a really long night. So. Yeah, they've clawed it back now, and as we'll hear from Chris Lucas, he wants that defense to come first because then your offense flows. Then you get Steph Tower and Alex Wilson on the run, and that's when you're at your best. So for Adelaide, this is game number eight on the season. This will be the fifth time that they've given up more than 40 points and a half of basketball. So I think, as you touched on, Pete, the other things I think that'll be concerning Chris Lucas the most. Uh, down by 18 at the moment, obviously, in the game, but particularly defensively. I feel those hustle stat categories, the offensive rebounds, which we've emphasised throughout the, the night already, just haven't been going their ways. Canberra recover it again here. Six on the shot clock. Smart makes her way to the rack, shot up, and again draws the foul. So they found their way to the hoop. They've got to the foul line. They're a perfect 12 from 12 on the free throws so far. Well, as we heard from Chris Lucas earlier on, is that pride and that defense of just of staying down and not getting beat because when the light uh, caps get past, they're going to get fouled or they're going to get layups and then they're getting O boards. But you can stay in a game. When, when your offense is dried up, you can stay in a game by just knuckling down and getting stops and kind of drying up the game completely. What hurts is if they're just getting whatever they want, it's really going to make it a long night when your offense isn't clicking. So if one of those two ends can really pick up, but. The, cap, uh, the Lightning right now, as we heard, their focus is on the defensive end. They've got to dry this scoring up for the Caps, otherwise it's going to be a really, really long second half. He's wee rung in the corner, thought about the look, dribbles inside, kicks it out, Badish to Talbot. Away to Wilson, five seconds left, shot goes up from Wilson, a little long, and Adelaide will get it back. Cock resets to 14, Whittle puts the shot up, and that'll do, banks the points. Back to 18 points. Capillo. A 1-2 with Griffin. Back to Griffin. Trying to back her way in in the short corner. Shot goes up. No call. Talbot floats through. Pulls down the defensive rebound. Talbot in transition. Makes her way through the paint. Shot goes up. Doesn't go. And the roof pulls down the rebound for Canberra. So far too few of those scenarios for the Adelaide Lightning. Steph Talbot a chance to go coast to coast. As Brittany Smart shoots the three. Michaela Roof, another O board and the put back. And Roof makes good. Well, it was a great little patch there from Lightning. They just didn't capitalize on him. Uh, Marina Whittle's defense on Kelsey Griffin was outstanding and it led to Steph Talbot, who would want that one back. And there you go with the caps. They end up getting a an offensive rebound bucket and then compounded it again with an offensive foul. But those are the little plays when you can get a great stop and then get out and run, which is your best offense, is what you've got to take advantage of when you're trying to catch up this lead. Third personal foul on Marina Whittle. 20 point game. Whittle stays out there here, 90 seconds to go before half time. Roof dumps it down low to Froling. Talbot got a hand in there. Heading towards the half, Canberra protecting a healthy lead. They did have it out at 23 earlier in the second quarter. Here's Jade Melbourne, an exciting teenager. Ricochets off the leg of an Adelaide defender and all the way over the baseline. Canberra will get it back. Adelaide have only led at halftime twice this year, so four and three on the season, but two of those games coming from behind to win at halftime. 
Cabello dumps it into Roof. A handoff back to Cabello. Out to the corner. He's smart off the dribble. Finds Roof going to test her range. Jump shot goes up, no good, and Whittle comes up with it for Adelaide. Now it's another really outstanding defensive possession from the Lightning, and they've got to get something here to, to really reward themselves because they've had a couple in the last mi few minutes which have really been good and they can build on it, but can they get a score here to really help? Here's Talbot, swings it over to the weak side. Weerung pulls the trigger, no good. Long rebound to Melbourne. Here they go downhill. Jade Melbourne, the teenager, shot up, no good. Over the baseline. Adelaide's ball, final 52 seconds here of the opening half. Alex Wilson trying to make something happen for Adelaide. Badish, a handoff to Talbot. Goes on her left, back through the lane, tries to chuck it out in the corner. We run with four seconds left on the shot clock, takes Melbourne to the basket. Draws the foul. Maybe Weerung will head to the foul line. That's a really great play by Weerung right there. And got cut off by Jade Mel. We know that she's going to be that energetic defender and to spin back around and go to the line. And I think Steph Talbot might have had a nice little hook layup there at the front of the rim, but did the unselfish thing and passed it across. But better offense because there was some action towards the rim. They passed the ball around the perimeter as well. And these last couple of minutes, they've really stemmed that bleeding that we talked about. The Caps had this blown out to 20 points pretty early on, and they've kind of held it at that. But it's going to be those plays we talked about where they get the stop. They've got to reward themselves down the other end if they want to get back in this game. One of two on that trip. Kayla Roof hits, oh, in fact, Froling hits the floor. Roof chucks the pass down to Cabillo into the corner. Smart for three. It's a second triple. Makes it from the corner, Brittany Smart. Finding some points off the bench for Canberra. Out the 22 points. Whittle puts the last shot up of the half. Draws the foul. May not be the last shot. 1.7 seconds left. And foul shot's coming up for Adelaide here. This is a really great read by Brittany Smart, knowing that when that baseline drive happens, someone's going to be in that corner. And you're going to get a lot of wide open threes if there's a baseline drive and you find yourself there with your feet set and... She's coming. She hasn't been shy tonight. She's letting him fly, and she's one of uh, two or four now from, from three. And that's what uh, Paul Guy, it's a great luxury to have to be able to bring these players in off the bench and help the scoring tick over as well as that defensive energy. Whittle's second shot up. It's good. 21 points. Second left. She doesn't even bother chucking it up. Abby Cabillo, the work done for the Capitals in that first half. Adelaide kept their lowest halftime score for the season. Just 25 points and another solid defensive effort from the Canberra Capitals. It's the fourth time this year that they've kept the team to 25 points or fewer in the first half. 46 Canberra, Adelaide 25, the Caps by 21. Well, this was all started in that first quarter. The Caps came out on fire and, they, and Tapea talked about it in her interview that their defense was going to be what started it and it really was. They kind of just took the lightning away from what they wanted to do and it just stemmed. Their offense was clicking, which we know how good they are offensively and then everything else kind of just capitulated for the lightning in that first quarter. Turnovers, uh, missed shots. Their offense was completely uh, all over the place and it just built out that lead. But in that second quarter, it was a much better effort. But you're always going to be in trouble when you're chasing a tail against a championship team. Let's check in with the Canberra Capitals. Maddie Rochi sensational in that first half with 14 points. She's with our own Braden Hazelhurst. Yeah, Maddie, you guys seem to come out with a lot more energy and especially physicality after the loss to the Boomers on Tuesday. How much of a focus was that for you guys? Yeah, I mean, that start was what we needed. Um, that was been our main focus after that Boomers game was getting that start and that defensive pressure. So to come out that way and to lead into the break with um, this score margin, obviously we can't be too worried about how much of a score margin there is and come out firing in the next half. And you guys, 46 points in the first half and yourself got 14. What's enabled you guys to get going offensively? Yeah, I mean, I think we're just moving the ball well and looking for that open man. We're not playing selfish. We're playing to find somebody who has the ability to score with that open space. When they're collapsing, we have shooters on the outside. So, I mean, it's hard for them to defend, but, yeah, we're doing what we do for the team. Good luck in the second half. Thank you.
Thanks to Maddie Rocci, sensational half of basketball from her 14 points. They really capitalised on Alex Wilson being in foul trouble early in the piece, but um, Rocci was, was sensational both sides of the ball for the Caps. Well, you're right, the Alex Wilson fouls really hurt because you know that Alex Wilson and Steph Talbot are the engine room for this Adelaide Lightning, and when one of them has to sit, it's going to be hard, but... You could see that what they wanted to do defensively, they wanted to make nights tough early for Alex Wilson and Steph Talbot, and the Lightning just kept trying to force it in there. And they didn't. That, this was their best offense when they could get out on the run and they could get players to, coming off the rim. I think they had really three or four maybe good offensive possessions the whole half. And Chris Lucas will be saying that, yeah, we've got to tidy up the offense, but right now defensively, 46 points is just too many. Better in the second quarter, but as you see right there. The Caps are getting whatever they want. They're breaking people down off the dribble. They're out and running, and then just getting offensive rebounds. And when you're chasing your tail against the championship team, nights are going to be really tough if you keep giving up those things. Teams get reputations over time, and one of the reputations that the Canberra Capitals have is that they are, they are a physical team. How much of being a physical team, Pete, in basketball comes down to, sure, there's a clearly a physical component, but how much of it is a mental component? That when you come up against a team and you thought, you just think, particularly if you're down early, this is just going to be a dog of a night. It's going to be hard and brutal the whole way through. Is there a mental aspect that's a part of that? Well, there is, and it's kind of what the capital has touched on as we look at some of the halftime stats here. The things that will stand out, the rebounds that came a little bit closer, but that was kind of blown out early. The assists and the shooting right now from the uh, Caps, they're just getting the easier shots than, than the Lightning. But you talk about the physicality, it's because they, they're well drilled with all of this. They know this is how they play. The, the referees see it as well, and they let a lot go away because they know that the Canberra Capitals play this way. It's not a switch they flick on. They always are physical, and that's the way that they uh, referee the game. And it, it's all well and good that if you have teams that try and match it, and you're not used to it, that's when you get these little fouls. You see Alex Wilson get a couple of fouls. The Caps are always going to play that way, so you've got to try and match their phys physicality from the jump because you try and flick a switch in the first quarter and look what happens. You get foul calls and you let them get away with things. So that's why they're a championship team. Yeah. We, we expect this to, we, to see this from them and we enjoy watching it. How hard is that to turn around in play? Well, it is, and a lot of it is you look at those kind of things on tape in a normal season and say, hang on, we're going to do some drills like this in training and practice and we're going to... You're going to be down or we're not going to call fouls for certain things and really try and match it. You don't have that luxury in a season like this. And in the Adelaide Lightning, that was better in that second quarter, but now it's half time. You've got to try and put the score to 0-0. Let's win the next couple of minutes and then let's win the third quarter and let's try and match their physicality. You might get a foul two called here and there, but if Chris Lucas sees it, the referee's going to see it. And over time, you're going to match their physicality and then exceed it. And this game can be turned around, but it's tough when you come up against a team like this who could just do it so well. The Canberra Capitals are the two-time defending champions. Uh, they went on a seven-game win streak before they lost on Tuesday night to the Melbourne Boomers. And they're going to get better and better and better. Already a settled unit and they're getting players back from injury. One of them is Kelsey Griffin. Uh, she was sensational in that first half of basketball. She managed to walk away with uh, eight points and five rebounds. And the efforts of, of Griffin and Rochi, but just to put a light firstly on the, the former league MVP and what we saw from Kelsey, Griffey, Kelsey Griffin in that first half, Pete. Oh, she was great. She was six and five in the first quarter. It was a bit quiet. She only played 13 minutes, but she's just such a smart player. She gets in the right spot. She knows where she's really successful and she doesn't let defenders take her away from it. And that's what I'm glad we're seeing her in the starting lineup. She's going to be ultra important for their run to try and to win this title. And another one right here, Maddie Rochi. And just love watching her play. She's just so aggressive, so creative. And that's what was really fun to watch early in the season was her and Jade Melbourne. But she's a player playing with extreme confidence. And as you said, the Opals, you never know when it comes to this. She keeps performing. She's going to make yeah. Sandy Brondello think, hang on, I can't possibly not have her in the conversation when she's doing things like this night in and night out. We're going to have a lot of guards to choose from, aren't we? Oh. For, for Sandy Prondella, you talked about Shyla Hill. You've also got uh, Tessa Levy and uh, mm -hmm. Tess Madgen, obviously, as part of this um, this extended squad as well. But I feel like Rochi's the, the classic case that you probably didn't have her as, as one of the front runners pre-season, but given the season that she's pumped out, she, her chances have got to be better than they were uh, when, the, when the season started a couple of weeks ago. Well, I definitely don't envy the selectors on Sandy Brondella when it comes down to it because the guards are going to be so... Those spots are going to be so hard to get for the Opals, but that's what you want. You want to have those tough choices because you want to have everyone competing. And Maddie Rochi's putting her hand up. Shyla Hill's another one, a young superstar in the making that you're going to give these vets who we know and have always delivered for the Opals saying, hang on, 
Lani Mitchell, the last couple of games, has said, hang on, my time's not over yet. I'm still here, and you've got to come and take it from me. And that's what we get. That's how good this hub season is, is we get to see them go against each other every single night. And it's so fun to watch. And, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Where whoever does get to put on the green and gold is going to be well-deserving. Mm. Uh, it's lifeline round. It's also the penultimate round of the WNBL, which means uh, we have a particular focus on the run home. Each team's going to play 13 games. I just want to put a light on the Canberra Capitals here and, and take a look at what's ahead for them, the two-time defending champions. So they're 7-2 and two on the season at the moment, and they've got games to come against Adelaide, Townsville, Perth, and then in the last game, uh, that's a matchup with the Southside Flyers, which is could be a prelude for, for what's to come in the in the playoffs. Well, it's going to be huge. They're a game behind right now, the Flyers, and you know that top two is going to be a massive chance to try and win this title, and you get that second chance. And yeah, it's a good one home for them. I think they they're going to be able to take care of business leading up to that big game, and that game's going to matter because they're probably going to have to play each other then, and then the week later or the couple of days later in that first final. So. Momentum in a season like this is massive, and I think the Canberra Capitals right now, they got the number of the Flyers last time. The Flyers are looking really good right now, so that game's going to be huge because a couple of days after, they probably have to play each other again. The quirks of the draw, too, some teams have less travel than others, and I think that's important to remember that the Canberra Capitals, although they're the two-time defending champs, they started in Mackay, they had the flight to Cairns, they've done their Cairns trip, they've done their travel. Um, they're in Townsville through to the finish, so if they're holding up the trophy again, they, they won't be travelling again. So that's a, a big plus for them that they'll stay in Townsville now until the end. Oh, well, that'll be massive for them. And yeah, they lost to the Boomers the other night, but that's a good loss to have because... Right now, it's still you've got a few games to go. You get to go back over there and tweak a couple of things. And as you see, Paul Goris coming out with a different starting lineup now. And just now they can put that run together. If they if they kept winning those games, then it might seem a little easy. And that's when you come up against the Flyers who are rolling, and it might be uh, bad for them. So they'd be happy with that. Obviously, not to lose, but now they can get back to business. And you see what they've come out and done so far in this first half. And that's what championship teams do. Adelaide are playing catch-up somewhat. Obviously, they've played fewer games than every other team given uh, their stint in quarantine. So that's the path ahead for the Lightning. They're obviously up against the Canberra Capitals at the moment. they got a game against Perth where they'll start favourite in, in that game. They beat Perth earlier in the year in Mackay. Then the next leg is, the, uh, is a back-to-back. -back, so they play games against Melbourne and Bendigo. And then the last matchup, it could all come down to this. It feels like we're sort of forecasting as much as we can if you try and blue sky the season. But um, the matchup with Townsville, this is the one that was dropped off the schedule. So they only play each other once. So to use our sort of footy terms, a proverbial eight-point game, whatever you want to call it, it could really come down to that last game of the regular season. Well, we know how important every game is in a season like this. And yeah, they are playing catch-up and they want to just string wins together. I think that's the most important thing is they want to start playing good basketball, get that momentum rolling every single night that they can start to tick off one win, then the other, and then let other pieces fall in. You want to control your own destiny. You don't want to have to let other teams kind of lose and try and help your way in because they want to get back to where they were pre-quarantine. They were fun to watch, and that's when they're at their best, and I'm hoping they can get back to it because that would be... How good would this season be to end where yep. those last two games have so much to do with the rest of the season? Let's see if they can get something out of the second half. Uh, the Adelaide Lightning well down by 21 points here to the Canberra Capitals. Let's kick it down to courtside. Brayden Hazelhurst is there with us. Um, Brayden, what was your take on that first half? Yeah, guys, the UC Capitals were all over the Adelaide Lightning from the get-go. And like I said, pre-game, they looked a bit different with their attitude. They looked more energetic, more loose. And I think that when I spoke to Paul Goris, he said the loss the other night might have been good for him. So they've really been all over him. And led by uh, Kelsey Griffin, I think she's been inspirational in this first half, just with her throwing her body around and leading by example. And obviously Maddie Rochi as well on the scoreboard. And they really kept Adelaide out of transition in offense, which is, you know, that's where Adelaide get their points. So they've been really good on that end. And more importantly, they're doing it in front of Townsville Fire, who are watching on the baseline who they play on Sunday. So sending the right message ahead of Sunday's game, guys. Thanks, Braden. We'll come back to you throughout that uh, the second half, which is upon us. Last of the warm-ups just complete. There's a few of the Townsville Fire Girls getting ready to go for their game. It's the second leg of a double header. Of course, being played at Townsville Stadium. The Fire Games have been well supported. They have had um, a few locals in, and you were telling me, Pete, that it's actually been a change in the restrictions up there in Townsville, so we could have a few more patrons in for the playoffs. Well, that'll be huge. As you said, the Townsville Fire, in a season like this, when every game is so important, and if you catch a team who's asleep for one night, it could be the end of their run. So, yeah, come finals time, it, it, they could be loving having the, uh, the fans behind them and, and really helping them go because they're a team that they play with that kind of energy. They play with 
cliche, but they play with fire. That's what they do, and they go out there. Shyla Hill, Lauren Nicholson, they just roll, and they're a fun team to watch, so you never know what can happen. And, yeah, there might be some clear favourites, but as we've seen, if you're not on your A game, you can get beat any single night, and that's how good a season can be when it comes down to one game. Perth are coming off a win, too. And Townsville haven't played since Sunday, so they've had a, a bit of a rest into their Friday night fixture, and then they play uh, Friday, Sunday, Friday, Sunday to complete the season off the next two weekends. They do have a, a trip to Cairns chucked in out of Townsville Fire, but uh, that's the, the game that's coming up next, the second leg of the double head of the fire up against the Perth Lynx. They met on opening night. It was a long time ago. The Perth Lynx in better shape than they were then, losing that game by 25. It's wide on the scoreboard here at halftime. Caps by 21. Is it going to get better or worse for Adelaide in the second half, peak? Well, that's what Chris Lucas will be saying at halftime, is their defence has, has got to be better. You've got to have better energy, physicality that we touched on, but already right there, their offence looks missed layup, but the ball went side to side and a nice attack and down the rim, and, and really an open layup in the end. We know Tolo can get some nice blocks, but better start offensively, unlucky not to make it, but can they now make sure they get a stop? The Caps in the light blue, Adelaide in the grey. Second half action, Townsville Stadium. Capitals by 21. Jump hook from Kelsey Griffin. Picked up where she left off. We touched on her at halftime on the back of the big first quarter. She's up to double digits, Pete, to 10 points for Griffin. Oh, as I said, she's just such a smart player. Just read that seal perfectly, and she's not going to miss many of those. And I love seeing her back in the starting lineup because she's going to have so much to say with, with this uh, run for the Caps to try and go and win another title. He's we run for three. Second three-point attempt in this trip down the floor, and there's Griffin again, floating through, pulling down the strong rebound. Canberra move it around, they dump it down to Tolo, and she puts it in off the glass. That's the offensive execution we're talking about. Not forcing it, and then a silly error right there from the Lightning. Not forcing it in. Tolo had that position. You just fly it around the outside of the perimeter and end up getting a nice, easy pass, and right there, the ball flying through hands, and. That's just too easy, but that's what the Lightning have been asking for. Chris Lucas has said, if it's not there, don't force it. Pass it along the perimeter and, and get those easy ones because you've got players in the right position. You've just got to feed them where they need the ball. 71% of all games this year in the WNBL won by the team leading at halftime. 25-35. Foul court here is Matty Rocci. Giving everyone in Adelaide cold sweats in that first half. She's Picking up where she left off. 15 points, three rebounds. More points for Canberra. Out to 27. We run, runs the floor, answers straight back. End to end stuff to Payer. Tucks the arm out, and Alex Wilson drops back. The ref bought what she sold. She draws the foul. 25-point margin remains. That little bit of extra physicality, and, and yeah, she, she might have started a little bit there, but we'd seen it already. And you lift your intensity on one end, it kind of works into the referee's minds. They're playing harder now, and they're going to get into the ball a little bit more, and those kind of calls happen. So it might be a bad call. Great block there by Tolo. And she, she's done that well tonight, but that's all we've wanted to see from the Lightning from the jump. That's what the Caps do that the referees know, but look at that. Tolo, once again, he thinks she's beat. She just comes across it and says, no, not tonight. And they're such a well-drilled team. The, the score before by Weirung was really uncharacteristic of the Caps to be so broken down in, in a defensive possession. The best block, uh, shot blockers in the game, Mariana Tolo, four-time WNBL champion. Oh Spin move for Rocci. Somehow finds a way through the keyway and lays it home for another bucket. She's having a night out, Matty Rocci, up to 16. You can see the bounce she has in her step, but she plays like that on both ends of the floor. And she's so fun to watch when she's in that creative mindset as Tauber lets one fly. And hasn't been her night so far to pay her up the floor. She's proven me wrong on cue. Tauber floats through in the passing lane, comes up with the ball. And there's her crime partner, Alex Wilson. We've seen enough of them out there together so far tonight with Wilson picking up a couple of early fouls. His we run, shot goes up, and again, a hand on it from Mariana Tolo. Well, we touched on the, the, the two-headed dragon, Alex Wilson, Steph Talbot. We know what we're going to get from him, but when you come up against a team like they did with the Flyers twice, and now the Caps, those leading teams, that they're going to go at you. They're going to try and shut you down and say, make someone else beat them. And, and that's the kind of task that was set for the Lightning here. And 
Is it going to be Wee Rung? Is it going to be Chelsea Brook? We know what she's been doing. And someone else to really help carry the load that make the Caps not always have to stare at where is Steph, where is Alex. Someone else has to try and kind of help them out. And they've got to play their game as well and really read the way that they're being defended because the Caps are just going after them. It's Froling. Away to Rochi. Oh, shoots the pass down to the corner to Paya. Bops it up. Out to Griffin. Down to Tolo. Can't get a shot away. Nice work. Badish. Frolling somehow got it to pay a no call as Wilson hits the hardwood. Basket will count. More points for the Capitals. Had the 29 the spread. 56 to 27. Bit of work to do on the floor. Let's have a look at this again. That Alex Wilson banging bodies with Frolling. To pay a left and lay it up. Three minutes into the third turn. Oh, all of almost lost it. Whittle, the jump shot, that's nice. Knocks it down. And Whittle was one of those players we talked about who else can step up, and she's going to look to be more aggressive. Yeah, she came off the bench tonight, but she has that ability to put some points up and really take the pressure off Wilson and Talbot. Is Rochi away to Griffin. Sensational in the first half, and she continues her hot night. Nice jump shot. Up to 13 now, Kelsey Griffin. Make from deep on the floor. It's Talbot. Works inside. Shot goes up. That's good. One back for Adelaide. Just sticking over 30 points here. Four, four minutes into the third term. Froling draws Talbot, goes all the way to the rack, misses, grabs, pulls down a strong offensive rebound. Ball runs away, and it was last touched by Talbot, so Canberra keep possession. Great help side defense there from Whittle, and we've touched on that a little bit. She really does well at getting in, in the right spots at the right time. And, she needs to reward herself a little more, especially on the offensive end. She makes really good reads. And... Let's see what they can do here. Abby Capello off the dribble. Oh, has her pocket picks. Nice work by all of them. Way to Talbot. Talbot drives. Left-handed shot goes up. No good. And Roof found hard from behind. That'll be the fourth foul that'll be called to on Marina Whittle. I think might have just been out of bounds. Oh, we got very lucky there, I think, over the back. If the ball was the, uh, off another defender, it might have been a different call. But you just see that energy. And I like Whittle's game because she's such a smart defender. Look, that's a really great defense. Someone's got to help her out when she gets taken out of the play because that's just too easy. More offensive rebounds, four of them for Michaela Roots. She's now got points on the back of it. I should say three for Whittle, three for Wilson. Two in any kind of foul trouble for Adelaide as Steph Talbot trying to find a path to the basket. Oh, gee, that was ugly. The floor a bit wet there where Talbot came down. I think Brianna Tolo trying to come in and lend a hand to Talbot. Slips over. Oh. Cross, she's okay. Just looks to be back up and moving around you're having a bit of a love would happen when you're trying to be a good teammate <laughs> two women have played plenty of basketball together Marietta Tolo and Steph Talbot been to an Olympic Games in Rio foul shots coming up for Steph here so the court side Announcer in the background there, running the local PA. Um, Pete got the bright orange suit on. Is that part of your collection, the wardrobe at home? I'll probably be more of a light blue. I'll probably be more of a Capitals in, in that regard. But <laughs> you'd think he knows he's in Townsville, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. That's, I think that's fair to say that's got to be game night only, doesn't it? The, the bright orange number. Doing a fantastic job. One of three venues used during the 41st. WNBL season, Townsville, Cairns and Mackay, the hosts over six weeks. 
Here's Cabello, puts the shot up, doesn't go. Ends up over the baseline and roof underneath the bucket trying to pull it down. This is the physicality we talked about. They know that the Caps have been dominating the offensive rebounds here and I, it didn't look like there was too much in it. And yeah, really unlucky. Alex Wilson tried to get a body in and Roof just attacking the offensive glass, which he's done. And, and that's exactly what we've talked about. That's what's going to hurt over time. Is this reputation that the Caps have, and it's already started in this first quarter, and then the Lightning, you're coming up against another team that's coming off a loss. It's going to be really hard to, to really, when they want to bounce back and show that they're, they're the championship favourites, the Caps. Cabillo bounce pass down to Roof. Roof chucks it back to Cabillo. 4.30 to go in the third. Now seven on the red numbers. Down to Tolo. Tolo with another basket. She has just dominated tonight in the dunker spot. Just gone to work all night up to 10 points. Perfect from the field, 4 of 4. Well, she just saw it. Whittle was actually really good defense right there and had nowhere to go. And then Tolo just got in the right spot at the right time and made it really easy for her. She, she makes all her buckets really easy because she just gets in the right spots. She cuts well and she gets in the little dump down spots. and. That's why she's, she's been so good for so long. She's such a smart player. and So when your bigs are smart like that and don't have to force anything, it makes the thing, life as a guard a lot easier. Averaging 11 and 6 on the season so far, Mariana Tolo. Biggest outing was against the Flyers when she went head-to-head -head with her Opals teammate in Liz Cambage. Ortlip with the triple. Catches the rim, no good. Bodies hit the floor and there's a whistle on that here. The roof goes down. Being over the back foul actually called on Canberra. Well, that's that corner, the corner that we were talking about, and it's, it looks like a really unfortunate call there as well. Because that's what you want to see for Chris Lucas right now. When, when you're down 30, you live with that because you, you want to see that aggressiveness going to the rebounds, especially on the offensive end, because you want to force extra shots. And, and he'll be saying you, he'll live with a couple of those early on because you set tones and, and you kind of bring the team energy along with you. So it's hard to kind of switch on when you're down 30, but he'll live with that, knowing that they have the aggressive and the right attitude to try and get those O-boards. Luella Tomlinson called for that foul. As Froling lights it up from three-point land. Keely Froling with her first make from deep. They've doubled Adelaide's score. 33 points. Alex Wilson answers straight back. The counter punch at the other end. Her first points of the night. Comes 3.30 before three-quarter time. Third member of our team, Brayden Hesselhurst, is courtside for us. Brayden. Yeah, guys, I think what you're seeing with the Canberra Capitals, with the, the change in the starting lineup, you're also seeing their three bigs play together a lot more, and they're such good passes. You can see a lot of connections between the two, a lot of high-low action, which is leading to those layouts from Mariana Toll. That's been a real addition for the UC Capitals. On the other end, Adelaide have really struggled for consistency after coming back from that quarantine break. And I spoke to the assistant coach, Nat Hurst, before the game, and she said they spent four days doing nothing so uh, during that week. So it's really been a tough time for them because they were clicking before that break. So tough break for Adelaide, but they need to get it together quickly if they're going to make a, a bit of a run for this top four. Mixed results, too, coming out of the quarantine period, which interrupted round two of the season. So that heavy defeat, first night out, 40 points against Melbourne. Roof misses her second. So first miss foul shot for Canberra tonight. 15th, 16th shot that went up. Just on the path for Adelaide. They then had wins against Bendigo and Sydney and two lopsided results against the Southside Flyers. Have a look at the rebounds quarter by quarter there. This is where the Caps stamped their authority early in the game. 17 to 4 in that first quarter. Now it's 11 to 1. Just all over the glass, both ends, and that's what the second quarter looked better by Adelaide. They won the rebounding count, but the Caps right now are getting whatever they want, whenever they want, and Adelaide are just struggling to really just string those plays together that we needed to see, which we saw a little bit for glimpses in the second is a nice little jump shot there. Last year at the start of the quarter, Pete, was it going to get better or worse for Adelaide? Well, so far it's got worse, and she said the rebounding numbers, which extends again here, so 11-1 after halftime Canberra's way. And I think Paul Gross is probably really happy with that because that's the start of the game. He switched up his starting lineups and I had Kelsey Griffin back in and, and, and Tapea and to be able to see, they set the tone in the first five minutes. Kelsey Griffin was outstanding. Maddie Rochi, we know, but she's been starting and, 
in the third quarter again, it's been the same exact thing. They've dominated the glass. They've really played really well defensively. And then when this bench unit comes on, nothing drops, which is a sign of a good team. We've seen that the Boomers recently. We've seen that from the Flyers. Is when the starters set that tone, can the bench unit come in and keep it or extend it? And they've done really well in every aspect of that tonight. No, 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 no. Second power shot misses. Roof scoops it up again. There's another O board for Canberra. It's Capillo down to Froling, and Froling getting her scoring moving here in this quarter. Up to seven points. Here's Weera, tries to chuck it down low to Tomlinson, and Roof comes up with a handle for Canberra. So another goal offensively here. It's going to be a foul called off the ball. Tech foul is going to go against Luella Tomlinson here. Let's see if we can pick up what happened here. No, it looks like she had a few words to say, and it might have been an over the back, but it's just not a good pass. It's not a good entry pass into the post. She never really had the seal there, and when you're passing off your back foot to someone who doesn't have a seal, it's going to end up badly, and that's what we saw. And it has to be perfectly on the money. If you're on your back foot trying to pass over a defender to someone who's not in the perfect position, you're asking for trouble, and that's exactly what happened. And even if you do get fouled, it just looks like it's not a good pass because you're not ready for it. So missed foul shot there on the technical for Jade Melbourne. She tries her hand here from three-point land, can't connect. Griffin again pulls it down. Again, another foul is going to be called on Adelaide, trying to get after it. Points per game against so far this year, Canberra, averaging 63 points per game. <laughs> Phenomenal number. And defense wins championships, and that's something they've really talked about and they've shown. And they will be upset that they, they lost to the Boomers, but giving up 73 points is what that's going to be their, their biggest downfall. Is they know they're better than that defensively, and they've come out to prove that tonight. And for the Lightning, who's just trying to get back on track, get that momentum going, it's been unfortunate they had the Flyers twice, who look like they've found their groove, and the Caps coming off a loss, who want to prove that they are the best defensive team in the league. Badish, little pump fake. Catch and shoot here from Bash, who's come off the bench for Adelaide. Seven foul shots tonight, 18 to 21, the Capitals. They did make their first 14 of the night. It's so been the same sort of. Uh, shooting here from them from the charity stripe in the third quarter, but it was very unlikely you get through the whole night Perfect from the free throw line, especially not when the commentators are talking about that they haven't missed it Correct definitely gonna happen, <laughs> but yeah, it's the credit to their aggressiveness towards the rim We know they're physical, but they're just getting anything they want going head down and just putting the defense in tough positions And there's just no awareness there from the lightning who as we said is their offense was all over the place in, in the first quarter and that lead ballooned and then they were chasing the frustration was kicking uh, settling in and second quarter they kind of stemmed that bleeding but in this third quarter they've come out on fire those capitals and kelsey griffin maddie rochi and the bench unit and jade melbourne just doing her defensive energy is what we love to see and see if she can get going offensively as well it's so disjointed for adelaide tonight offensively it just hasn't happened for them defensively all in all of Pretty ugly night so far for the team in grey, the Adelaide Lightning. There's a chance for Steph Talbot to get out the open floor. Downhill, puts the shot up, and it's good. Manages to shake. Hannah Kayser is getting some minutes early here. Still better part of a minute to go in the third turn. The Capitals have been in cruise control for some time, out by 34. Kayser with the bounce pass. Down to Roof along the baseline a bump on Cabillo on the way through she's going to lose the handle no call a bit unlucky there for Cabillo but you talk about the lining they're coming up we, they want to find their offensive groove it wasn't there the last couple of games they played and they're coming up against the team that is trying to stamp their authority defensively after a loss and it's going to be always harder to do and that's why every possession matters this game might be over now but they got 10 minutes to just try and execute offensively and find out where they can improve on in these little aspects for their next game and it's tough it's, it's going to be tough in a season like this Steph Town getting an offensive rebound there and 
it's going to be extremely hard in a season like this with no time to get on the practice court because that's where you can make these adjustments. And not only that, they've got to adjust against the potential favourites or one of the favourites right now. So it's going to be harder. But we've got 10 minutes now to, to go back and say, what do we want to look at? What can we fix going into this next game? And they play the Perth Lynx of what can we go up against Perth saying, these are the two things we want to focus on. Let's do them and let's start to get another win. Adelaide's lowest scored at three-quarter time this year. It's actually the third time Canberra have kept a team under 40 by three-quarter time. Touched on them being the best defensive team in the competition. We'll have to chat around that heading into the final quarter too as to who should actually be the title favourites this year. Obviously, the, the loaded lineup for the Southside Flyers, they've lost twice in the season already. This is Canberra Capitals team. They're, they're a different beast, so we'll get into some of that. Paul Gorris here, the coach of the Canberra Capitals, caps by 34. Get in, under, okay, look it like that, okay. Now if we can't pop it out to here, get it, and then throw it to so keep your seal if you're on the high side, we can't get it, pop out to here, roll it into the outside, keep your seal. So Carly Smith here, Maddie down low, Maddie Schmidt over, Carly Smith back screen. Okay, got that, one possession to show, okay. Hey, gotta, gotta make sure that like, the only step ups are okay, but we're rolling down hard and then fall behind it with our ball movements. Yeah. You see that! Paul Gorris there at three quarter time. A couple of the numbers through to three quarter time as well. So 72 to 38 on the scoreboard. That's dramatic enough. 34 points, it was 36 a moment ago. In fact, I'll give you the numbers in just a moment. Braden Hazelhurst was just you know, listening by to Chris Lucas, the coach of the Adelaide Lightning, at three-quarter time. What did he say, Braden? Yeah, Chris Lucas mainly focused on the defensive end, just wanted his team to get something out of tonight's game, especially on the defensive end and rebounding. Thought that hopefully if they could do that in this last quarter, they could get something going in transition offensively, which is what they're known for. So defensive, the focus there for Adelaide Lightning. Thanks, Braden. So 42 rebounds to 22. The numbers there as Tolo trying to make her way to the basket. Puts it up, no good. Another offensive rebound. Griffiths put back unsuccessful. So the O-board count, 17 to 10. Assists 18 to 8. The turnovers, just three more for Adelaide, actually, as far as the turnovers are concerned. So it's been a lot of offensive rebounds, a lot of second chance points. It's been wide on the scoreboard, really straight out of the gates as Bowdish tries her hand for three. Talbot, offensive rebound, that's good, lays it home. And Talbot hasn't given up, and that's the sign of a great play. She's been going out of that third quarter, where it was probably her best quarter for the game. But we see here the Caps going with their starting lineup as well. And Paul Goris want to see what they've delivered in the first quarter and the third quarter, and then probably sit them all with pretty early. But they seem to have got things figured out. and. Here's Tapea, bounce pass through the paint, trying to find Froling. At seven points in that third quarter. We run comes up with it though for Adelaide. This is the other thing, is that sort of, they've been throwing around their, their units a fair bit, haven't they, given obviously the injury concerns at the start of the season. So a bit more burn here for the actual starting five to play together, even though it's lopsided on the scoreboard. Only a couple of games left before the playoffs begin as Badish makes it from inside the charge circle. Well, that's right. With no practice for, for players like Kelsey Griffin, all these players to get their feet back and legs under him, it's got to be in games. And, and now Paul Goris, has, they've only got four games left and, and three after this. He wants to know what lineup he can go into the finals with because you don't want to be trying to tinker for that in a final where one game you could be out. So look for these next three games and even these last eight minutes for him to find lineups that he's really comfortable to play in Steph Talbot. And that's what we love to see. And, the Lightning would have loved to see more, but, but it starts with getting stops, and that's what we really highlighted early. They weren't getting any of those, and the two times they did, let Steph Talbot kind of get away and get rolling like that. So Paul Goris having a timeout, not happy with this, because he's got his starters in there, and he wants to push this out. You mentioned earlier it hadn't been her night and her kind of game, and you just touched on the fact that she continues to fight on and absolutely well, uh, well and truly in the MVP conversation. So her numbers now all of a sudden look... On track with their season tally, she's got 17 points, eight rebounds, a couple of steals, and an assist to go along with that Steph Talbot, the team which is going to be well beaten. Well, that MVP race is going to be a cracker, and obviously the, 
Liz's name's going to be thrown up there, but another one on that team, Sarah Blitzarves does all. She's terrific. And plays 29 minutes a game, fills up the stat sheet on across the board, like, gets a lot of steals. So she's a little dark horse because Liz is going to take a lot of attention with her numbers. And then we know what Steph Talbot's been doing. And then Lauren Nicholson for the Townsville Fire is she's so fun to watch. And yeah. if she can keep carrying this Townsville team, then all of a sudden whoever gets that trophy is going to be well deserved. And the other three or whoever's going to be extremely unlucky to miss out. She the best two-way player in the game, Lauren Nicholson. I think so. It's such a guard-heavy lead. We know that Liz is going to come in and dominate, and we've seen Tolo do her thing. Kelsey Griffin, these bigs that we know and love to watch how they play, but the guard play in this league is such a tough thing. We talked about the Opals and, and everyone, and it's every single team has that really elite guard. And when you've got a player like Lauren Nicholson who can put points up on the board in a hurry and then kind of clamp down on the other one, it just highlights that how important she is to the team and how good she is in the league and why she is going to be in that race. Talbot adds the extra to so the add one from before the timeout up to 18 points. Maddie Rochi, she was the story of the first half. Had 14 points before half time. Along with Kelsey Griffin. I'd say she was the story. They're such a well rounded team, aren't they? The, the Canberra Capitals. Even you look through their bench tonight. Yeah, they, Abby Cabillo comes off and plays her role. Jade Melbourne's now coming off the bench. But Kayla Roof's been good again. Brittany Smart's banged down some three. So. Contributions out of everyone that stepped on the floor tonight for Canberra. Cabillo down to Tolo. Another high output night for her. Tapaya just chucks up the three, misfires. Tolo got a hand on it, but Basham recovers the ball for Adelaide. Well, oh, Griffin goes straight at her and comes up with a steal. Great work from Kelsey Griffin. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carly Smith does it straight back to Rod. She recovers possession for Adelaide. Well, that's why Paul Goss called a timeout. It was a 9-0 run to the Lightning, and they just look like the, the caps are kind of gone away. Yeah, the game's over, but you've got to maintain that focus. He put you back out on the floor as a starting unit in this fourth quarter so that you could just work on things together because they don't have that time in practice, which I keep saying is you've got to get these groups to play together as much as they can in a game, and he won't be happy with this first three minutes. Alex Wilson trying to find her crime partner in Talbot. And Canberra awake to it as Rochi comes up with possession. Final seven minutes. First leg of a double header tonight. There's another game to come at Townsville Stadium. It's Perth Townsville next, the home team. Mariana Tolo. Let's rinse and repeat all night for her. In the low block. Little spin move off the glass, more points up to 12, five of six from the field. Again, just gets in the perfect spot and they threw the ball to Kelsey Griffin and she knows when you've got a bigs that work to well, that well together, just knowing when, when to pass and Alex Wilson, I'm oh, sorry, um, Basham right there, but that, when you've got bigs that work and play for each other so well, that's what makes you a really tough team and just perfectly timed and a bullet pass to, to Tolo who's had a, an exceptional game, but they all have. And, Brooke Basham was really one of the finds out of the game's midweek. I think the game you did against the Flyers, she came in off the bench, 13 points, five rebounds, a couple of assists. In fact, that was in the Sunday game, the first of the two matches against the Flyers, and she put up those, those nice numbers, getting to burn here in the final quarter. Braden Hazelhurst is with us courtside. Braden. Yeah, guys, we've spoken about uh, Canberra's tenacity on the boards, and it's actually led to Michaela Roof having a massive egg on her head from one of the contacts so uh if the camera could catch a, a shot of that it'd be uh pretty interesting and i know uh michaela from coaching her at the lower league she'll be pretty proud of that and be taking a lot of photos of that after the game so something to definitely look out for certainly zoom in on that when we get the opportunity it's cabillo his roof up top swings it away to froling froling pushes away Talbot is going to be called for the offensive foul so foul goals are no, foul is called on Froling and seven points all of them came in that third quarter it's a nice little run from the Lightning a knockdown there from uh, Chelsea Brook another one who as I said played really well in that last quarter against the Southside Flyers and, and Chris Lucas is just looking for who wants these opportunities and can they start to, to build that momentum going forward in that next game and Kayla Roof with she's got seven boards 
And that's what you want. You want your bench players to come in, bring that energy, and that's why the Caps are so good. That's why the, the Flyers and the Boomers, these teams are so good because their bench comes in and just carries on what the starters have done, and if not, extend it. Ooh, get a little carried away there. And they've had a couple calls go against them, the lining, but it can't come down to that because there's been so many things that have been in their control that they just haven't taken care of. 43 rebounds to 27 is the massive one that they'll be looking at. That's seven rebounds to Michaela Roof, so that's probably part of the reason how she's picked up that egg on her head. Still out there at the moment in the number three singlet for the Capitals. Rochi swings it out. Nice baseline jump shots. Good. Put down there by Michaela Roof. Right on cue. So the five out there, Roof, Cabillo, Rochi, Tolo and Griffin for ca uh, the Capitals. Here's Steph Talbot at the other end. Nice rainbow three straight on up top. Nothing but nylon for Steph Talbot. I'll give her a lot of credit. She just kept fighting and fighting all through tonight's game. And they've been all over. She's played 31 minutes. She hasn't stopped the whole game, and that's why she's so good. And we love to watch her play. And It's not as if this, as you touched on, this last quarter has just been filled with development players for uh, the Capitals either. They started the quarter with their starting five. The margins, it's 24 points at the moment. Sure, it's, it's lopsided. It did get out to 36 one stage in that third quarter. Adelaide are winning the turn, as you can see the, the breakdown there quarter by quarter. It's probably going to be more frustrating for Chris Lucas because you're right, they had the Caps had their starters into the start of this quarter. He's going to be like, where was this yeah. the rest of the game? And they showed a little bit of glimpses in it in the second quarter, but the first and thirds, which are probably the most important quarters, to play and come out with energy. They were just nowhere and they were stagnant on offense. They weren't playing together. Their defense was all over the place. They were getting beaten. And now they're having to play catch up and it's super hard to do against any team, let alone one of the championship favorites. His quarter by quarter rebound. So unsurprisingly, they've been banging on about rebounds all night. Look at those numbers in the opening quarter. 17 to four, quarters in quarter number four. Adelaide in front of the rebound, yeah, five to two. And it was more than that. It was more like the first seven minutes where it was almost like 14 to one yeah. in both the first and the third quarter because they just came out and absolutely dominated, put their foot on their throat and didn't, and was so relentless. And I'm sure when Chris Lucas goes back and, and looks at the tape, he, he's going to cut up a lot of bad stuff from those first and third quarters. But then this fourth quarter, you could almost show as a whole and say, this is what we want to see from us. The ball's been moving. Granted, Steph Talbot's been awesome, but they're breaking down the Caps defense and they're finding ways to be successful and they're moving the ball as we see right there and Chelsea Brook again and their offense look it looks like a different team that we're seeing right yeah. now in this fourth quarter and second made three of the night the seven of 24 now from the three-point land for Adelaide the best quarter of the night uh, the Capitals best performing quarter this season has been their final term they'd only been outscored once in the last quarter before this term here Disconnected now Canberra offensively as Griffin misses Cabello with a bounce pass. And this game has been over, but Paul Grice won't be happy with this because, as we said, in one bad night or one bad quarter can send your season home early when it comes to the finals. So he'll, he'll be really disappointed that they haven't closed this out stronger. And Changing the playoff setup too, so no three-game series anymore. It's, uh, it's virtually one and done. If you finish top two, you get a second chance. The opportunity to qualify directly for... Uh, the grand final, but the final itself is one and done. Last year on the stroke of three-quarter time about the title favourites, I understand the appeal with Southside, the, the overwhelming offence when you put that much talent on one team, but the games they've lost this year, I think I've done a couple of those, I think I've did both those games, that it was really defensively that they were exposed and of course, the old adage that we always like to pump out close to playoff time, our defense wins championships. If you're looking for the best defensive team in the in the land at the moment, it's it's this side right here, the Canberra Capitals. Oh, well, it is. Just they're so well drilled and the energy they play with, they all move together and the guards just don't let anyone breathe. And it's really tough to play against. I spoke about the guard heavy league and and it's kind of just a wake up call. But we talked about this last quarter, Paul Garris, because they've still got three games left and they come up against the Townsville Fire, who if they take care of business tonight, you know, seven wins, and all of a sudden, if, if you keep some bad momentum rolling out from a quarter and it kind of stems over to the next game, then you're catching your tail. And we know that last game of the season when they, when it's Caps versus Flyers, could have huge ramifications on that finals because the last thing Paul Goris wants is for them to have to beat the Flyers to finish top two. 
you do not want that in, a, in yeah. the way the finals are set up. So he'll want to make sure they finish off these last three minutes right. Looking forward to Sunday. Shot up, no good. Tyre, Ashley Tyre has come off the bench. Hayes are also out there. He covers the ball on the baseline, just chucks it back to anyone that was there. And unfortunately for her, it was Chelsea Brook who gets the easy basket. 23 point margin, it was 36, latter stages of the third term. Final two and a half minutes. Nationally televised game two on Sunday. Melbourne Boomers and Southside Flyers trying to establish some of this pecking order up top. Ort look for three, Miss Fires, Brooke pulls down the O board. She's been terrific, and that's something the last couple of games, she's really just playing with a lot of confidence and shooting the ball well, but every other aspect is... Basket for Adelaide. Points will count, Morgan Yeager. It's a minutes late in this game. Another one, it's a great take, and Chris Lucas will be looking for just whoever wants to take advantage of situations like these. And That's been under 20 points for a long while either. Brit Smart somehow passes through the lane, drops to her knees, gets back, still with the handle, and now the offensive foul is going to be called. Amy Brett draws the foul. Five out there for Canberra at the moment. Tyre. Uh, Brit Smart, Jade Melbourne, Hannah Kayser, and Alex Delaney on the five for Canberra late. That's a great take by Brett right there. And you see she was all over Brittany Smart there. Gets beat and then just steps her body in. And just the, this whole last quarter, it's a different Lightning team than we saw those first three quarters. And that's probably really going to frustrate the coaching staff of the Lightning. Brook, Brett, Ortlock, Jaeger and Whittle, the five out there for Adelaide late. A hot minute left in this. 19 points the margin. Adelaide a fought on as Brook. Kicks it back out to Brett, shoots the three, no good. Jaeger comes charging through, comes up with it. Out to Brooke for some more points, and her jump shot's good from the foul line. What's she up to now? She's up to 12 points. I mean, credit Jaeger and Brett for coming into this game and playing played two and a half minutes each. And let me look at the scoring spread right there. And as we said, they just look like a completely different unit. Their offense has been way more aggressive. And yeah, you can play with that. Uh, when you have no pressure, when you know the game's over, but this is the way we see the Adelaide Lightning play pre-quarantine and, and a couple of games other than that. When they play, when they flow, and they're really aggressive. So to be able to look back on this last quarter and say, guys, th we know we've got it in us. It's not gone anywhere else, but we need to be able to tap into that from the jump because when you come up against these good teams, they're not going to let you breathe, and they're not going to beat themselves, and that's the most important thing they've got to remember. Smart knocks down her first at the line. So the Capitals on Sunday up against the Townsville Fire, Perth and Southside, their remaining games, those last two next weekend, which is the final week of the regular season, would you believe? Just repeating for Adelaide, they'll be in action again this weekend against the Lynx on Sunday. Be able to take some confidence at least out of this final quarter. Then they've got a back-to-back -back midweek games against the Boomers and the Spirit. And then in the last round, they play Townsville in Cairns, by the way on the Friday night and then they make their way back to Townsville to play Sydney on the last day of the regular season, Sunday week. Still more basketball to come tonight. Second leg of the double header, the Perth Lynx up against the Townsville Fire. The Fire, one of those teams with Adelaide trying to lock up a place in the playoffs. Well situated at the moment with Six and three record. Shot goes up from Whittle. There's a foul called on the shot, so foul shot's coming up for Whittle. 27 seconds left on the game clock. First game for Townsville as well since Sunday, so they've been able to have the, the working week off. Friday night basketball up against the Lynx next. Did that game last Sunday as well against the uh, Sydney Flames. The, Shot the lights out in the first half, led at half time. I think they only had 14 points after half time, and Townsville really locked in when they had to and came from behind to win. Of course, it was Shyla Heal again who <laughs> took over in the third quarter. Second time we've seen that from her in a game able to uh, really to lead a comeback. And that's what 
I think Paul Goris wants to see from, from their, his young guards is can they have that energy and that defensive ability to go and shut down a guard on another team? And they did that from Alex Wilson from the jump, put to pay in the starting lineup. And they want to see that because when you play the Townsville Fire, if you let Lauren Nicholson and Shiloh Hill get going, you're in for a long night. And now when you come up against the Boomers, Matty Garrick's rolling as well. And we know what the Flyers have done. Lelani Mitchell, Beck Cole just set the tone for them as a guard spots as well. So it's super important to be able to have that ability as Chade Melbourne. <laughs> We haven't seen too much of it, but we've loved what we've seen from her this year and just another luxury for Paul Goris off the bench. Perfect exclamation point on the night for the Canberra Capitals. Jade Mitchell with a nice solo move and a 20-point margin in the finish. They came out hot, the Capitals. What a way to bounce back after the loss to the Boomers midweek. Caps back in town in a big way. They get themselves to 8-2 and two on the season, the best defensive unit in basketball. They keep Adelaide to 65 points. The Capitals 85. It's the two-time defending champs, Pete Hawley, by 20 in the finish. Well, they did what they had to do, and, and yeah, that, that last quarter wasn't good. I'm sure Paul Gross has something to say, but they came out with intent from that first jump, and that's something that we heard in the, in the pre-game interview with Tapia was they wanted their defense to be better, they knew they had to be better, and their offensive execution, and all those things just rolled for those first three quarters, but their defensive effort, especially against Alex Wilson and Steph Talbot early, granted Steph Talbot kept fighting, which is what we expect from an MVP caliber player, but this Capitals as a unit, as a team, is so dangerous when they're playing like this, and that's why they're one of those top three favorites. We've lost three in a row now for the Adelaide Lightning. The only teams to have lost three in a row in the, the league this year, the Lynx, the Flames, and the Spirit, who are all, all out of playoff contention. So they need to turn around that skid fast. Adelaide, they've obviously got a, a condensed schedule, having missed a week, which is, that narrative's been well played out. But back-to-back -back losses to the Flyers and another title contending team in the Capitals. It's 20 points in the end, but it was it was 36 in the, in the third quarter when the the game was really dusted halfway through the opening quarter in, in retrospect. Yeah, and a condensed schedule can work one of two ways. Obviously, you'd like to be able to have practice to, to really look at the tape and try and fix things, but they come up against the Perth Lynx next. If they can start to flick a switch and come start playing some good basketball to get momentum going, then they play the Boomers, which if you start with them early, then you never know. You can catch them off, off guard and, and kind of roll, and they're going to have to put those wins together. If they want to make a run at that fourth spot, it's got to start in that next game. But I think happily for... Chris Lucas, it started in that fourth quarter right there. The ball keeps rolling for the Canberra Capitals. Their players keep getting fitter. They had three players that started slow, obviously carrying injuries into the season. Uh, Kelsey Griffin, their team leader, the engine that makes the team go. She had a big night tonight. She finishes with 15 points and nine rebounds. And Braden Hazelhurst has got Kelsey Griffin with him now. Kelsey, a big way to bounce back after the loss to Melbourne the other night. How important was it to have an improved performance after that game? Yeah, definitely. You know, in this season, the games happen, happen fast, and you have to make adjustments fast. You know, um, we're the best defensive team in the league, and so I think for us, we really needed to go back and look at our defense and what we can do better, and I think that really showed tonight. You know, Adelaide's a very, very capable offensive team. You know, you have Steph Talbot, who's, you know, in there for MVP of the league, and Abby Waring, who's a very capable guard, and so um, that defense was so important for us tonight. And led by example in your first start of the season, <laughs> what was your mindset after starting most of the season off the bench so far? Well, I think it's been really good for me. I haven't had a lot of opportunity to come off the bench throughout my career, and so it was really good to be able to watch and learn the game and see what my team needed help with and what I could do to help contribute. And I think after watching that Melbourne game and watching what we needed, it was that defensive mindset, but also running the floor. I thought we weren't using necessarily our depth as much as we could have, and so I really wanted to set an example by, you know, running as hard as I could up and down and rebounding. And Townsville on Sunday, what are your thoughts on them, and what do you need to do to improve out of that game on Sunday? <laughs> I feel like me and Townsville have a long history ever since, um, ever since my start in the WNBL, and so it's always a great matchup when we get to play them. You know, they're young and they're hungry, and they play with a lot of heart, and so I think it's going to be a great game. No worries. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you so much. It's Thanks. great to have her back at Peak Fitness. Kelsey Griffin, what I loved most about that interview, Pete, just as they say, say it with your chest. We're the best defensive <sighs> team in the league. They believe it. They're speaking it. Um, and we saw it again tonight with uh, a sensational effort from the Capitals. Oh, you, you, you're right. If you're going to talk the talk, you've got to walk it. And they have been. And I think that's why they were so disappointed against the Boomers with their defensive performance. So... They had blocks, their steals, and you know, they didn't cause as many turnovers than they would have liked, but it was just their overall defensive effort and everyone moving together. And I think she's right. I think they are right now the best defensive team in the league. And 
it's up for another team to come in and match that. And I don't know if she has any aspirations to be a coach, but the way she speaks, she mm. will, she'll be a tremendous coach one day. I'm just so glad she's in the starting lineup and back playing some healthy basketball and playing well. And oh, I get why a lot of the attention sometimes goes to other teams because what often happens in sport, and this isn't just true of basketball, but across the, the board, that overwhelming offense looks better against mediocrity than overwhelming defense against mediocrity. And uh, it would be fascinating to see what happens next in this league and we can hypothesize the whole way through. But they're the numbers, Pete. They actually balanced up a bit in the last quarter. They were they were more lopsided at three-quarter time. Oh, they were. The, the rebounds, it looks like a blow out there. It looked much worse at three-quarter time. The first quarter and third quarters were just dominated in every aspect by the Caps. And they're the most important quarters. How do you set the tone in a game and how do you come out of halftime we call it the championship quarter, the third quarter, and that's what they did and, did, and that's why they are going to be one of the championship favourites. And, and we see everyone's talking about the Southside Flyers, and rightly so. They look like they've flicked a switch, but you're right. People do forget about championship teams because it becomes such a norm that people are, oh, the Caps are just good again. Um, I know from experience, Perth Wildcats, they're just good again. You just get to know these kind of things. And the Caps are just proving that, hang on, we, we want it. You've got to come and take it from us because they're not going to give you a chance. They're not going to lay down. They're going to make sure that they give you everyone's best shot. And that's why they look so good right now. Yep. I think the one good thing is that when we came into the season, there were certain pundits that were predicting that this was just going to be a whitewash, that it was going to be a cakewalk for the Flyers and they would win the title easily. Um, I think we know by now that we've got some games ahead of us. The, well, the, the Capitals, the Boomers, there are teams that can lock down and play defence on this Flyers outfit. Oh, there actually is. And, and the Flyers are another one. that They look back at that game against the Caps and they know that they're going to have to be better when they play them. And they have been the last few games. They've flicked a switch. So, yeah, it might look like there might be a couple favourites here and there. But when it comes to finals time, anything can happen. And you get a team that's going to running hot. And, like, you've got to try and stop this Townsville team who, if they get... A, hot one night, then all of a sudden you're in for a long one and then you've got the Boomers who have found their groove. Every team's finding their groove at the most important time of the season and it's fun for us to watch and yeah, Sunday's going to be a cracker. There's some big games. Uh, Lifeline round continues as well. So it is uh, round four of the WNBL season and there'll be a strong theme throughout um, that the assist tally tonight for the Canberra Capitals, every dollar per assist is going to go the way of Lifeline. That's every player across the organisation um, of the Canberra Capitals donating one dollar for every assist. And as you can see there, lifeline.org.au is the website. Uh, there's still one game to come tonight as uh, Friday Night Basketball continues in Lifeline round. It's the matchup between the Townsville Fire and the Perth Lynx. Uh, the Fire rightful favourite there, Pete? I think they are. and They've had a nice little break, so they'll be energetic and ready to go. But the Lynx and we know what they can do. They've got another two-headed dragon, Garbin and Ebsery as well, so it could be a good one. Always good fun, Pete. Yeah, appreciate it, mate. Can't wait. Thanks to Pete Hawley, Braden Hazelhurst and our entire crew. I'm Corbin Middleman signing off now. A victory for Canberra in a big way. They're back in town after a defeat midweek. The Capitals get home by 20.